Welcome. It is episode four, which is crazy because it feels like I've been thinking about this for so long and now I finally am starting a fourth episode, which I'm so excited about. Thank you for joining me. Today we have a very special guest, comedian and producer and actor, Eric Miller. Um, usually saved in my phone as Eric Comedy, so. Appreciate that. I'm very important. Is that a good thing or a bad thing when people do that? It's like, you know when people do that, like, like Charlotte class is that you know <laughs> that's <laughs> so how I met you. I'm saved in. No, I actually yeah, you're saved in Charlotte because I don't know many Charlottes. So, but I, I mean that's a good thing I guess. Yes, and it's okay. not like a but you know it's like uh, like Kevin open mic. It's like <laughs> when you move from Kevin open mic to Kevin and that's you become a real friend. It's so true. Actually, I did have it as air comedy for a while just because I didn't I could never remember your last name. It's so hard, right? Just a really yeah. tough last name <laughs> so, there. <yeah. laughs> tough um, to spell. Yeah, it's very hard. Uh, for people that don't know, what is it? Do you remember? Your last name or yes, mine? Mine. Miller. Oh, yeah, of course. Okay, right. so we're talking about mine. You- <laughs> <laughs> What's the top of your last name? It's very un. Not very mine, Otremba. Otremba. Okay, okay. Yeah, you were trying to remember it. No, I know your last name. It's, it's Polish. Polish? All right. Yeah. Um, but it's surprising to a lot of people that it's Polish because. There are no like Z's and K's and okay, many yeah. consonants next Does it to each mean other. Anything? Uh, I've heard once that it's a type of wheat in Poland. Okay, so but I don't know if that's true. It's possible. It's fun. Uh, or not. All right, continue. <laughs> <laughs> continue. Um, uh, well, I was just going to introduce you a little more. Um, you produce a bi-weekly. Did. Did. Well, <laughs> well, it's on pause right now. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Well, Tell we us about open, your comedy show. Uh, we had a show in Tribeca. It was open mic, and we did shows, and it was great. I yes. did it with a friend, and you did it, and everyone did it, and we had a good time. And it's been a while because of... Um, what's going on so hopefully when things open back we'll have that show going and more stuff yeah. to come you know so but the show was just common we were a good place for people to like the way i like to do the show is it's good to have some big names sometimes come in but yeah. it was more like humble brag yeah <laughs> we didn't have big names a lot we had sometimes but it was more so like having people come up together yeah. who have good talent and are funny but not necessarily like you know this guy who's because i like having good names on shows but at the end of the day, we got to support each other when we're not, like, really there. Because some people, like, I don't want to name names, but could do 50 shows a night. They don't need it. But yeah, everyone's sure. like, oh, I got this guy on my show. I'm like, great. But, you know, what about the other guy that's funny and needs a spot? You right. know? So I like that. That's what we're going for. So I know. I feel like you were so good about that. It always felt like the energy was so supportive there. Yeah. Like, me doing the show, I, you know, I always had so fun. I feel like my friends who would come yeah, would it was, love it. I know. The, the spot was amazing. Hopefully, like, comedy comes back where... Like, we had uh, DC Benny come down, and he's a cool guy, and he said, this is like a mini comedy cellar, and, and that's how it felt. Yeah, so. it really was like this secret, and and also I feel like, so basically just so everybody, if you don't know the spot, like basically it, it was like a regular kind of Mexican restaurant upstairs, and then you went downstairs and it was like this like stage. Yeah, and people didn't know. Like, it was there. So when you go downstairs, normally there's a bathroom and it's like maybe a five by ten, like a little area. And people are like, this is a show. And, like, and I would always mess with people. I'd be like, yeah, it's right here. Let's get ready. And then it would turn around. And it's like Narnia. It's like it's like that episode of Seinfeld. I don't know if you watch Seinfeld where George went to that nightclub. Remember, do you Seinfeld yeah. fan? And like he's like, Jerry, there's beautiful women there, right? And it would be like models. And then one day he brings Jerry and it's just like a meat packing place. Right? Yeah, so that's how it is. Like if you go there when the show is not, it's this is like yeah. this guy's working on like lumber and yeah, yeah. there's beer on the floor there's like there are like roaches and stuff no. people don't see it they're trying to say it'll go away lights yeah, off, yeah. yeah exactly and then uh so it's it was great and i i mean like we all me and kevin sanchez who's like he helps me he's a co-producer yeah. he's a great guy like we always like want to go back like 10 years from now I'm like that's where it started that's you know yeah. how you have those like memories and everyone there is great and they like messing with people and I don't yeah. know. It's just we we've come a long way because remember, like from the beginning, we know like where you know other people were there too. So and was, you also oh, sh- can, oh can we ahead. curse too? Yeah, like, you can curse. All right, I'm not gonna curse, but can I bring <laughs> what was that dude's name? Uh, Murph? No, 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 the boat guy. 
The, the bow guy, yeah. Marv. Marv, Marv, Marv. Yeah, yeah. Wait, Marv. yeah, like, so the characters you would meet. Yeah, no, that place is like Cheers. It's yeah. like, so it's a Mexican restaurant, and it's and it's owned by Dominicans, whatever, it doesn't matter, but it's like a like a Mexican-Dominican Cheers. Like, every day, yeah, you'll, yeah. you'll meet someone new, and I'll t- we met this guy, Marv. He told us he was like a captain on the Seven Seas, and he right. was like hitting on everyone, and try looking at, and then, but yeah. he just disappeared off, he's like, Actually, yeah, I wonder what happened to that guy. He's he's somewhere uh, in the he's Atlantic Ocean, probably. Somewhere? <laughs> yeah, because also I should say, like, this, it's like a Mexican cheers place, but then it's, and it feels sort of like a casual bar, yeah, gender, but it's like, in, and, right, yeah. but it's in Tribeca, yeah. so, so it's like a wealthy area, yeah. So the the celebrities I've seen there were Matthew McConaughey. No. Yeah, he lives over there, uh, apparently, used to, I don't know. Okay, well, he needs to come to the show. <laughs> we will hand deliver an invitation. Oh, All right. Sorry, everyone had a slight yeah. technical difficulty. It's my fault. All right, what was it? Just yell at the tech. Last thing I'll say about Zark is here we're in New York. We're in West Village, right? Yeah. Tribeca, New York. I I mean I have been down on New York because a lot of weird things going on, but I think. I've been to Zona. They have a whole. They're gonna stay open, and we'll do comedy again. It's a great place, and yeah. I I think everything that's gone. That place has been the best place for me developing comedy, and a bunch of my friends. Like we've all, we haven't made a dollar, but the money we have made from just becoming better comedians. Because remember, yeah, I mean, we took a class together. That's how we met. And yeah. So. That class was good, and I remember, so we went on stage, I did pretty good, you did good, we all did good, but someone in the class comes to me after the show, I think I told you this, right? I'm not going to say who, and they, uh, not a girl, a guy, I'm not going to say, says, good job, we all thought you were going to bomb. So, <laughs> I did not know someone okay. said Think about know. everyone in that class, and think about who would say that. And okay. Say, all right. So, I think I can think about who it is. Think, don't, I mean, it's... Okay, who do you... Or two. Do? I, yeah, okay, two. Okay. I have two yeah, people okay. that I think. Okay. And I'm going to guess not your brother. Not my brother. Okay. <laughs> okay. And who would the... Two, I would... I don't know. Uh, Can I say gender? Well, yeah, they're both... Okay, yeah. They're I both... Think... E- they're both... The two you're thinking of, I know, are, are girls. Okay. Right? Yeah, so... And one, the one is not the one who was at Zona. Okay, got it. Okay, so... <laughs> uh, we are thinking of the same okay. two. So... We'll stop there. Uh, <laughs> But it was almost like she thought it was a compliment. And but know, it's so backhanded. I know. Well, yeah. So I should have said. Uh, no, it's not. It's it's actually a straight insult. Yeah, I, I know. It's like real. And I the first show, I remember my mom was there, and she kind of it was weird. Even though she interrupted my set, she kind of calmed me down. Because you know when you first yeah. start a set, you need something to like take you into the zone. It's like playing sports. Like you're nervous until you like get hit or a shot or something. So, so I'm. Yeah, that's I, a good point. I'm. I got up there and I was like, oh, you know, it was crowded, and then. My mom started saying something. It was a class show, and I was like, kind of got me into because most of my stuff about my mom and stuff. So it got me into the zone of like, oh, okay, my life is crazy. My mom is heckling me right now. Blah, blah. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, she was also a great heckler. Yeah, I know. Right? Like it but wasn't a mean heckle. People thought it was set up, which kind of was like, I mean, whatever. It's a class show. I was like, what? That would be so lame if I did that. <laughs> but yeah, it but cool? also brilliant. Yeah, I, know, right? <laughs> I was like, oh, thanks. And then. um yeah, but I, like, I watched that video, it was terrible, you know, it was just, but it was good for a class, so we've come a long way, though. No, but I think I even remember talk, I, I'm guessing, like, the thing you're thinking about that you thought wasn't good actually, like, worked for your material. Yeah. Like, right. you were talking a little bit fast, but yeah, that, that worked for your material. Yeah. <laughs> I hate that. I hate when people say that, like, like you seem nervous, but it works for you. I'm like, oh, I, I don't, I hate when people say that. <laughs> it's like, oh, thanks. It's part of your thing. I'm like. Uh, I don't want to, I'm not nervous, but it is part of my thing, like, right now, like, oh, you look, it's just how, if I'm like this, I'm in the zone, if I'm calm, I'm just not feeling funny, you know, yeah, yeah it's like, yeah. so, but you, we've, you, we've done, like, 15 minutes at zone, I've done, like, 30, we never thought yeah. we would come that far, you know, that's true, yeah, and also, I think, like, you're so good about feeling, I feel comfortable when I'm performing there, yeah, I've had times where I've, you know, bombed really bad, but it has never been at Zona. Oh, okay. <laughs> one time I did. It was terrible. I mean, I've probably not. Well, so we did two shows, and then we had a third one, and uh, just everything went wrong. Like, no. pre- so I had this. You ever think of a joke that you just know is gonna kill, and you bring it, and it's like it just 
he started, I was like, wah, wah, wah. Like, I'm like, oh my God, it was so freaking bad. It was about Party City. It was just like, remember those stupid tickets that I yes! did? It's oh, just I a disaster. Like, yeah, yeah. It was not that bad. No, it, it was, was not a disaster. That bad it was, I had this joke about Party City and I planned, and people were like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, because we, we gave out coins <laughs> yes, or something. Coin I was era. too cheap to buy tickets, so I, I was like, let's just give out coins because they were like $5. <laughs> Honestly, it would have been more fun if they were like the chocolate ones. Uh, no, I was going to do that. I was, I was just, and then I was like, oh, I'll make a joke about this. And then people in the front, you ever see like Ferris Bueller? Day off when that I think it was no, no my cousin Vinny I just watched it. Do you ever see that when uh, it's been so long? So the guy is the attorney who's not Vinny that the other guy hired was like yeah. stuttering and stuff, and the guy in the um, one of the guys on the jury was like. <laughs> And, it was, it was, and so that's how they were when I was doing this, like, coin thing. I was like, hey, you can use a coin. And then I'm like, and it's this girl in the front. You remember the girl was just like. And then later, she was, she was affecting me so badly that. You can't, because there was actually, like, laugh, chuckles in the back. I know. You just couldn't, you were distracted by this one. She, like, she started having jewel come down, like Ferris Bueller. <laughs> there are always people like this in an audience. like, why are you here? Yeah. Like, you're at a comedy I know, show. Was, right, I could just tell. And then later, if she was getting to me and I said something to her. And it just, you learn from that shit. Like, yeah, my brother, yeah. Like, my brother, it was just so weird. And then um, Kevin smoked, remember? And I still I still get mad at him. I love him, but we talk about it. I was like, what the hell? But you know what? It doesn't matter. I yeah. overreacted. I, I tell we always do that. But... He's, he's become such a good friend. He's like, you know him. Yeah, right? he's such a good yeah. guy. And also pulls, like, all of his friends come. Yeah, I know, right? Like, <laughs> half the audience. No, he has his uncle, Uncle Dave, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. the uncle. Yeah, he always I does love him. Yeah, it's like, like, remember, the, uh, he just reminds me of a guy from Staten Island, his uncle. So he's very, very, like, comfortable. Like, where I lived, it was a mix of people. Like, that guy that, like, gets on his knee and says, like, yo, listen up, young blood. Like, he tells you his life story. <laughs> Whatever. I don't even know why I just said young blood. I'm <laughs> yeah. not really sure what that means. I have heard it on, like, rap songs. Feels like yeah. something yeah. you should just do. Yeah. Incorporate Can into your no. young I, blood. I, 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 <laughs> Do we want yeah, to? No, I, I it's of, usually for like a. It would be on Urban Dictionary if anything. Like, yeah, listen up, young blood. Oh, good. We got a song by <laughs> Five Seconds of Summer. <laughs> oh, isn't that like an Australian like? Um, young band? blood, Wikipedia. No, look, Urban Dictionary. Okay, well, Urban Dictionary. Yeah. This is. Let's see. Young blood, slang, a young man or boy. Race is not inherent. However, it did originate from African American well, yeah, culture. Well, yeah, I mean, I lived in a mixed community, so it's like if you're like, so Uncle Dave is a great guy. He's the type of guy, basically, quickly is like he'll give you all the knowledge you need, but if he's playing like handball or something, you don't bother him. So like, oh, gotcha. so like, like Uncle Dave, Uncle Dave, I need some help. Yo, listen, young blood, I'm playing handball right now. Then you come back later. So anyway, all right, let's continue. Uh, like- let's continue. I'd actually love to talk about Staten Island. Oh God, okay. you're from Staten Island. Yeah. Did you know Pete Davidson or Colin Jost? Okay, continue. What uh, are your favorite things about Staten Island? I didn't know either of them, except I when I first started doing comedy, um, I did it with this guy, and Pete Davidson was with this guy too. And I remember Pete Davidson must have been like 16, and he was calling this guy, and this guy was annoyed that Pete Davidson was calling him. <laughs> And then, long story short, he's... Uh, was that part of a set, you mean? No, no, no. Literally, we'd be in the car going to a show. I first started coming at a stop. Pete Davidson was like 16, and this guy was like the Staten Island comedy guy. And Pete Davidson would be calling him, like, hey, you know, I need a spot. And, this, and I remember him saying, this kid keeps calling me. Long story short, he's on SNL now, right? right? <laughs> That's so cool. Yeah, and That's was, props for like being pushy. Yeah, he was. I mean, I don't know. Or not pushy, him. but you know, he was motivated. That's motivated. Like, yeah. Com- comedians, like if I was like sixteen or seventeen, even when I was like twenty two, was like I couldn't do what he did. Like he was, from what I know, he was like going traveling and like it takes a lot to do that. Yeah. And then Colin Jost, I didn't know, but Casey Jost, who's his brother, was really funny. I did a couple of shows with. Um, actually, I did a show. It was called the Staten Island Comedy Show, and the whole um, what's it called? The Tenderloins, who are the um, they're the Impractical Jokers. That's what oh, they, yeah. Oh. They were at the show, and Sal. I was in the green room with Sal, and he bombed on purpose, and it was just like I didn't understand at first, but then looking back, it was hilarious. So, oh my god, that's yeah. so cool. Yeah, you could probably. I mean, actually, you probably can't find it, but so I didn't know Colin. I knew Casey Jones, who's really funny. I've seen his some of his. He has a. My friend sent me this Casey Joe's thing from like 10 years ago. He's like a bully in Staten Island, and it's funny. But, <laughs> uh, Pete Davidson, I don't know. Uh, my friends, though, uh, I am friends with uh, my best friend, Michael, one of my best friends, Michael Dreyer. He's not a comedian, but you should look up his work. Uh, this is going to go out. He's been in like uh, Sneaky Pete and Mr. Robot. And my friend, you ever oh, knew my nice. friend Lee Garrett? He's an actor, too, and he's doing Maybe. really good. Yeah. 
So there, Colin Jost. Yeah, your friends are always so nice. So. Yeah, Staten Island has a lot of great. It gets a bad rap. Um, yeah, that's fair. It gets a very. I mean, because <laughs> like TV, MTV, True Life. I'm from Staten yeah. Island. True Life, MTV show. <laughs> yeah, the latest but, show. There's yeah. another one. Is it True Life? I'm from Staten Island. Well, or is there like there, a new one? There was one. No, there was True Life. I'm um, from. No, no, there was tr- maybe Staten Island. But there was True Life, Jersey Shore, which kind of had like Staten Island connection. Um, but isn't true life usually like true life? I'm a drug addict yeah, or something, yeah, and like they're saying. equating but, stuff. But the Jersey Shore, that's what I'm thinking of. So that girl Angelina, it was like second season, right? And I was in some kid's house, and I remember we were watching the Jersey Shore, and I think she quit. And we're talking shit about the Jersey Shore. I swear in my life, she was in the other room. I, it was one of these. No, big, yeah, I didn't even know. And then she's like, "Oh, you guys watching?" And it was like, whatever. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't know what's going on. But Staten Island. I mean, I could. Well, in regards to what? Like, well, okay. I feel like yeah, it gets a bad rap. I'm from Queens, Long Island area. I feel like we always were like, oh, we don't go to Staten Island, yeah, and right. I had no basis for it. And then I went to a wedding there, like, I don't know, four years ago or something. And I was like, oh, it's actually like. It was pretty nice. What like part the, is that on? I have no idea. It was a hotel. Wherever like a hotel would be. It wasn't off the highway? Hilton or whatever. Anyway, Maybe one it, yeah, it was like a chain. Yeah, I know it's Not in a bad way, way my but just like was a, supposed to have a wedding there, but it, it got canceled this year. Oh, um, my, sad. <laughs> it's next year. Thank God. I, I got out of a lot of weddings this year because oh it's God. one of the silver linings. So many weddings. I got out of three. One was in like Houston, one was in somewhere else. My uh, Yeah, a lot. Anyway. Um Yeah, literally and I also but I the only good thing about having a busy wedding year is that like it helps you mark the time like i feel like i had no oh, God. like markers you know what i'm saying <laughs> it's like a holiday i i hate weddings i just i don't <laughs> why <laughs> of course you would can, can you see how you see how i dress right yeah i don't do suits well like i've never put on a suit just so like for viewers like literally or listeners i think you always dress eric always dresses in like a long v-neck tee yeah. and then skinny jeans yeah exactly and then like cool boots or sneakers but here's to be fair i don't wear skinny <laughs> jeans like as you know i'm not extremely tall i have thick legs <laughs> so it's not really they cool. are muscular yeah. ladies so I would show but it, it's not skinny I jeans show. it's regular jeans that turn out to be skinny jeans because my legs are you see what I'm saying uh, 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 so if uh, I wore skinny jeans I would look like like I would get arrested walking down the street right. so, yeah. just so much to handle yeah, exactly. so much leg so the Miller boys are known for <laughs> thick legs you can even ask my brother Steve so apparently like, over time the crotch area rips and it's not like it's just because you just can't find the proper gene <laughs> wow ladies no it's not <laughs> it's not even because of that it's well i mean well uh, it could, i'm not trying to break not. it's just a lot of whatever but that's what good we about? you work out S- you walk oh i walk a lot oh yeah so this was another thing i want to talk about eric miller is probably like new york city's long distance walker. champion yeah, long yeah. distance walker i did i was supposed to do a show a couple of weeks ago and my friend was like um what do you want to put on i'd be like former comedian and like professional walker because that's <laughs> what i've been for the last like six months i swear from march tw- i've always walked but since this pandemic started i've walked an average of 12 miles a day from March. that's crazy but i know it's just, i'm like i'm like a video game character basically i'm in the background <laughs> just walking in circles like you know i've seen this bit just like and it's the same guy. That's all you see. I saw. I see people in March that I saw in winter coats that I saw. In <laughs> you t-shirts. just keep circling. Yeah, and, yeah. No. What did I do? I go from Forty Second to down here, then walk back up, then walk down. And people like I be, made friends there. Like these guys that work there that talk to me. There's like homeless guys who I know. It's like, I'm not, there's one guy that wears. I don't know if you ever seen him because you live. He wears like ten winter jackets in the summer. What street is he on? He's everywhere. He's, He's just, everywhere. Yeah. He just walks up and down, and then in the summer, no, in the summer he wears ten, and then in the winter he wears one. It's so weird. I don't understand. Yeah, I guess it's like whatever you can. Yeah. Can snag. Yeah, no, but it's just like he's holding all. He's a nice guy too. We talk, no, we don't talk, but we don't. Talk. <laughs> we have. We have uh, I, I part of me thinks he's like an undercover cop. You ever see that movie? I uh, with Nicolas Cage uh, and I think Bridget Fonda, where he's like a cop and they have some lottery thing, and there's a guy like following them. It's no. Like Isaac Hayes. Anyway, he kind of has that vibe. He's just like. One day he's going to take off his jacket, like, freeze, motherfucker. Right? So, I can see that. Yeah, so. I also think of, like, the SNL sketch where... Which one? It's a joke of, like, I don't know, basically this homeless guy, I forget, like, it was a celebrity guest, and he... Oh, I think... And this woman's like, oh, I'm going to help him today and, like, save his whole life, uh, and then it's, like, an actor undercover. Oh, okay. I, is, that, <laughs> I, is that newer or older? Like, a few years oh, Okay. Old. I feel like you had a question that I missed, but... Oh, um... Staten Island? You're still on top of it. Okay. Uh, no, Staten Island, we talked about... 
Would you ever live in Staten Island again? Like, would you move back? I never thought I would. I hate to say this. I was like, no, I wouldn't move back. But in the terms, I never thought I would leave Manhattan. Like, because I love the city, but yeah. it's really like. Lately. Or- yeah. It just every. I mean, I don't want to get too much into it, but. I feel like it's a lot of problems going on. Like yeah. when I, I, you know, I work in the beer industry and like selling. A lot of restaurants are closed down, and then Broadway's closed down. What's gonna happen? What yeah. people know, whatever. So the city is just crazy. I mean, it's this so... it can rebound, rebound, but I don't know. I kind of. I want to do more comedy, so maybe get out of the city, get a car, start driving around doing gigs rather than like yeah. rely on an open mic in the middle of Times Square. Like, right. I know, yeah. Have you done any of those outdoor shows, or what not are really? On like that? one, I, I mean, I applaud everyone that does it, but I just, yeah. I don't know. I, I, I just don't want to. I mean, it just like I have a friend who's done a lot, and she's great, but she's like tired of it. She's cold on top of yeah. the rooftop, so she's yeah. like, I'm gonna go to Mexico for twenty days and relax. And so, yeah. I think when we all come back to it, um, I, I had this joke with her. I was telling her, I was like, I feel. You ever have someone like? Get go into a coma. No, you ever hear someone go into a coma and they wake up and they know like Mandarin? Like I just I have to, <laughs> I, I want to like not do comedy this entire time and then just like wake up and be on stage and be like Chappelle and Carl and just learn all these tricks somehow. <laughs> yeah. But one of the things I think like we all have faults on stage. Like maybe when I go back full time, I'll like some of those things that I just couldn't snap out of because I was doing it too much will be gone. That's my hope. That's but, actually a really good point. Yeah. I feel like too by the time we get back to it, it'll we'll be so grateful and like I know, happy right? to be I, back. I think I'll that... be like less nervous. I mean, I like being nervous before on stage, but I'm talking about like like those things that like so, like. Uh, it's kind of he's got to get rid of that. I won't even remember doing it, so it'll be gone. Right? Know? Yeah, that's a really good point. I also feel like too. I mean, I don't know if some of this comes with age, but I feel like I so will like be so in my head sometimes. Yeah, so and I feel like at least like now I, I'll just like not care. It's like I want to do this. Yeah, exactly. Being it's this is like who cares? Let's just do it. You know? Yeah. You need like a life. You need something to happen in your life to realize like who cares? Just have fun. People always tell yeah. you that, but you can't remember it. You know? Can't remember it until there's a global pandemic. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So. <laughs> can't remember it yeah um <laughs> my mom called me just before i got here she's like she's like i just calling you up because i heard all the chaos going in the city <laughs> <It's> <laughs> like, i'm like oh god that's why i was like no. yeah and also i went to Staten island last week i took her to target and uh oh <laughs> yes your mom loves yeah. wasn't your mom banned from target yeah, she was kind of but i was like uh, kind of well that's, you need to tell this story oh, no, she, i mean it's in stand-up uh, it just she wasn't really banned i of course like made it a joke but she like one time i took her to target and she's like, she really wanted to go. And I was like, I don't want to go, whatever. I'll go into, like, another store to do this. And she's, she needed me to go in there because she wasn't allowed to return stuff anymore because <laughs> she returned stuff too much, so she had to use my ID to, like, do it. To return. So that, like, that morphed into my mom got banned from Target, which, she you know, she's allowed in, but, you know. Yeah, that's but how it, she's, like, sort of on the list. Yeah, she's, she's, like, she's, a, she's a problem there. <laughs> she's so, a problem. And, and then she walks in and like, she's like, this is my son. Like, they know she's going to be in trouble there, so. <laughs> but the joke, that's, I mean, if you want to talk about how like my jokes work quickly it's like that happened and then that turned into oh she got banned and i had a sneaker in and then you know she was in the card and all that crap so yeah i do think that's like a really interesting thing to talk about just because i kind of do the same thing yeah, i feel like most comedians yeah i mean if, like, someone, exaggerate. if someone says to you after the show like oh is your mom really banned from target that's when i'm happy it's like that yeah. that joke really resonated or, yeah uh, but like in the beginning when i first started like my jokes were like not no one's gonna say is like well i don't even remember but like you know, those jokes that don't really connect with people. They, you get a laugh, but it's not like, oh, no one can just picture you and I'm like, whatever. So, right, yeah. So that's what I try to morph to, you know. Yeah, sadly, life doesn't always have that great punchline. I know. it's just, but People to... laugh like, what are my, the tall couple joke I like. People, always good. I think people re- relate to that, you know, a couple walking down the street. It's like, I'm not tall, so like... Basically, the joke is I, I wish I was taller because I want to be part of like a tall couple. You know, you those six t- <laughs> is walking. They're always so happy. They're yeah. just freaking nice, beautiful clothes. The air's clean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you said. Like, yeah, the air's better up there. Yeah. <laughs> Their clothes fit well, so. I don't know. I feel like cool. not all of us have your legs, you know. Yeah, exactly. We're right. working on it. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. I was also going to say, too. Like, when you're walking, <laughs> you, I feel like you also are the new mayor of New York City. Like, I get voicemails from Eric. Oh, yeah, yeah Just, yeah. like, telling me how unsafe yeah, this like, is. Stay off of 14th and 6th. There's a <laughs> shooting right now. And the cops are all over the place. It just sounds like people think I'm, I'm like, I'm like New York 1. Remember that? Like, <laughs> yeah, literally. It's uh, 10.06 in the afternoon. I'm like, dude, stay out. There's a, there's a, there's a couple of uh, giant rats on the West Side Highway. Seriously, I just like the fucking Matrix. I just see the same rat every day. 
It just runs across. It's on repeat. You are like a Staten Island mother, though. I feel like your voice memos yeah. are like, I don't know. I don't think you should be going out at night anymore. Yeah, I, I know. I was like, you and your, I was, I was like, you, like, you're saying your boyfriend, you go out. Yeah. yeah it's like, don't go out past 630. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want you to get stabbed. I'm like, and I'm not exaggerating. I know Citizen App is like, Whatever, it's exaggerated. A little I had bit. to turn off notifications for when I'm not in the app. Because well, you will literally think you're going to die. Oh, the second. worst thing is when you have the headphones in and <laughs> oh, they no. have that a notification. It's like a kind of like a law and order, like banging. Oh, and it's like, oh, what now? And then it's like, <laughs> oh, it's like, what's the. We, oh, someone sent me. Listen, <laughs> this is the weirdest thing I got today. Let me see. Um, I had one that was like, while well, you're looking for that, I had one that. Literally, I'll always have one. It's always the same block around the block that's like man with sharp objects. Oh, yeah. Well, and you're like, what you is it? Man dressed in bunny suit, acting violently, <laughs> comma, grabbing dogs. <laughs> so, so, and this is in freaking financial district. So, oh, and then the comments are like, you know, let's see. And then this is, you know, a couple other ones. <laughs> like what is a man I mean that just sounds like drugs that's yeah, gotta no, be that drugs that sounds like some like <laughs> whoever wrote that is uh, or putting a joke in yeah exactly but for, that used to be like Citizen App like 50-50 but ever since this started it's been like you know I, we're joking about it but there's things going on to see that I don't it's bad for everybody you know yeah yeah, so. yeah what are your thoughts on the comedy scene, like when do you think it'll come back? You know, I got into a. We were had uh, me, Kevin, John, and Josh were like having like a every from March to like June. Anyone tell me had a birthday, we had like a FaceTime, and then so in May it was John's birthday, and we started talking, and he's saying like, "Oh, I don't think people are gonna go back on stage till April of 2021," and I said, "Dude, you're out of your fucking mind, right?" Yeah. But I'm like, that might be true. That actually yeah. might be true because like Broadway theaters and yeah, stuff are gonna so, open. So I don't know, man. I don't really know. Yeah. I wish if I knew the end. I just feel bad because this, like, luckily for, like, you know, not luckily, but I'm not, like, I don't have kids, blah, blah, blah. Right. Like, these comedians that, like, that was their livelihood in the city, and now who knows what's going on. Like, right. Like, so, and clubs and... Like, I don't know how they're going to stay open. Like, new, like even Comedy Cellar, like, their livelihood was the college kids and all that crap. Right. You, know? you just never think, like, that will end... Yeah, like you never, never. I, yeah, I never thought if I bought, if I was able to buy a house in a city in January that was like, say, a million dollars, I would say, oh, this is a great investment. I'm good. Now these people are like lost like 30% of their yeah. value. You know, it's like insane. I know. So it's like, in a weird way, it's, I'm kind of lucky that I don't own anything like that. The people are losing their lives and the, you yeah. know, all I did is lost like jobs and stuff and I can recover. So that's what I, what I feel bad about, you know? No, it's so true. Uh, and we don't have to deal with like little kids running around. Oh God, yeah. I, I mean, would, like, I mean, kill myself. <laughs> God, I can't imagine. I so, can't imagine. Yeah. Sending blessings. I know, blessings. <laughs> <laughs> blessings. I'm blessed. Uh, take that. Um, all right, let's talk about some, <laughs> some pop culture topics. Okay. Uh, one thoughts on Ellen and her new hairstyle. Didn't see do, it. Can you Google? Yeah, it? let's Google it. And do we think this is enough of a rebrand? Okay, let me. I don't even. Actually, her new hair is like is pretty much cool? like yours. Oh God, yeah. She looks like Rachel Maddow now or something. No, not quite. It's like, it's like yours pretty much. Hold on, wait. New, oh new. I didn't know she had a new hairstyle. You know that somebody... Oh, yeah. um, like, just, like, I think it's this. Is this it? Yeah, it's this one. It's this one. Okay. Oh, she looks like... um. Okay, I don't like it. Yeah, no, I don't either. She looks like... um. <laughs> she looks so unhappy with it, no, too. You know what? <sighs> oh, it's like a helmet. I don't like it at all. I don't like it. No, I, I take it back. Yours is more... Uh, yours looks better. No, than but hers. I think if I had that... I mean, she's got a nice full head of hair. I'm, she's... I don't know if... See, I don't like... That's what the thing is. Like, like the thing about, like, podcast and Joe Rogan, she obviously had to do that because some things went on and they told her she needs yeah, to change it. Yeah, you need so to like, change it. Like, I don't want to ever get to... I mean, it would be nice to have $100 million, but, like, she looks like... Don't like it. I'm not going to say anymore. Yeah. No, I don't like it either. And I just... Yeah, I, I just feel so much like it was somebody on her team. Yeah, it's... What like, you need a new hairstyle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, oh, Quibi. Okay. Canceled. You want something funny? I am so happy it's canceled because I had an audition for Quibi like last year. I was gonna ask you that next. Oh, if you okay. had any auditions, though, that's perfect. Yeah. So I remember I went to the audition for Quibi. I totally dis- bombed it. Sorry, I said destroy. I meant bombed. It was awful. <laughs> like but it was, it, was, it was bad. It was there. It was my fault. All my fault. But I didn't. You ever walk into an audition room and it's like, oh, man, and it's just like. 
So I bombed it, and then I didn't hear anything for obviously, and then Quibi, and then I saw Quibi came out this year, and I was like, you know when like you have the audition, and then they're like. Oh, so you had the audition before Quibi was even yeah, out. Yeah. So you I didn't really understand. Like, it said, like, Quibi, new thing, whatever. Oh, got it. So, and then that went along, and then I saw it coming out, and I was like, oh, damn. I don't even know what it was for. It was, like, some news bullshit. Yeah. And then it, it came out. I got, like, the free thing. I never watched one thing of it, and then it canceled. And I was like, you know the term, like, I think I'm saying it, schadenfreude? You ever hear that? Oh, where you're, like, happy when something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, ah, yeah. yeah, it was great. I was like so happy, even though they didn't do anything wrong. I mean, they offered me an audition, but it was just like, no, yeah, yeah. it was so weird. I hate auditions. I haven't had one in a while. Have I you been? Well, obviously, you haven't been into one because have you been into like a? One I had like a few self tapes, oh, yeah, yeah. but yeah, like didn't get anything. And also, like, I mean, I don't know about you, but I I've been like staying in different. Like, we stayed with yeah. My boyfriend and I stayed with like each of our respective families yeah, for a few no, weeks or whatever. I don't think they have in-person auditions anymore, yeah. but I always hate them because when you first start acting and with commercials, you're like, "Oh, I'm going to get this and make $100,000 from a commercial." Then you realize like there's 8,000 people there. They're just it's so stupid. Yeah. I, I mean, and then I, it slowly sucks yeah, your optimism like, away. <laughs> and then you walk in, you see how they treat I hate acting in general to be honest. I like acting, but I hate the whole like if you're on a commercial, which I've done a couple, they're so much nicer because it's just you're on a commercial. Everyone's yeah. together. But you do a TV show and let's say even if you're an extra or a small part, they're just not nice to you for some reason. It's so weird. Yeah, you part. are like a little bit forgotten. You want a funny story? I was an extra. And my, one of my first things, I was on The Good Wife and they sat me next to, um, what's her name? No, star, Juliana Margulies. Nice. And I'm like, I was kind of like, you know, new to it. I was kind of like, I wasn't, I think I may have creeped her out, but I don't know what I did. And, <laughs> and they moved me. No. I swear, I like they said, uh, can you move over? I don't know what the hell. And Michael J. Fox was that was cool too. But um, yeah, just acting. I just want to do like comedy, and maybe at this point I don't know what I want to do because this year has been weird. But I just want to be co- happy. Happy. Right? <laughs> happy. Yeah. I think everyone does. I guess. I mean, what was the auditions? Yeah, I guess that. You're good. You're good. All right. Next. Um, did you hear about this? So Kanye West. <laughs> okay. Kanye West, uh, for a birthday gift for oh, Kim's yeah, 40th, that. That's weird. got or commissioned, I don't know what you would call it, a hologram of Kim's dead father, late father. Yeah. And then, and then if that's not weird enough, so it basically sounds and looks just like him. If that's not weird enough, then had it say, yeah. oh, and I'm so proud of you and your and that you're married to the most genius, genius man. Or something similar, like most genius, but I feel like there was extra mosts or extra geniuses in there. Like, um, thoughts on that? Well, so what's his name? <laughs> Rob, no, what's, yeah, Robert Kardashian. That's his name? Yeah. He was big when we were young as the OJ guy, right? Yeah, yeah, and exactly. Then, and then I watched the movie him. where David Schwimmer was... Like, yeah, the show. So I think that's... Very Kanye, so it's so like Kanye. it's I, like it's thoughtful at first. Like yeah. you, at first you hear it and you're like, oh, what a thoughtful gift. Yeah, and I then, think here's I'll just I think holograms of dead people should be illegal. So <laughs> it, so that's all I have to say, right? It, there's nothing. There's no anything. Yeah, like stuffed dogs should be illegal. Right? Yeah, I find that weird too. My mom for a while was like threatening to stuff our like dog when she was sick she was yeah. like oh yeah well don't worry we're gonna stuff her oh, God, no. and we were like mom <laughs> but hol- holograms gotta go i don't yes. like it yeah i think it's and i also just feel like it's weirdly traumatic yeah no that's because that's right, right you've already grieved there was a weird hologram thing i don't know if it was a hologram or a computer thing and this is sad but like one of the kids that died in parkland shooting uh, you saw this no, I, I hate but to, i feel like i've so, already don't like it. Okay, so they recreated him in an anti-gun video. It was so strange. Yeah. So any recreation of a dead person, I think, should just not happen. That's how I feel. I, I agree. Care. I would agree with that. Because... We'll just leave it at yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> I just think that's Quibi. not okay. That's um, why, that's the, that was the downfall of Quibi. They tried the hologram game. and it just Wait, they did? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Quibi, I honestly... I also felt kind of that way because it was almost exhausting listening to how much... 
everybody talked about Quibi. They were yeah. like, oh my God, Quibi's going to be the next new thing. Quibi this, Quibi that. They gotta st- like the next new thing is never the next new thing. Because whenever they say that, it's not. You ha- The next new thing has to just happen. Right. Yeah, you know what I mean? It's like. Yeah, because Quibi's like, oh yeah, short form content going to be the next new thing. And yeah, TikTok and was I, like. <laughs> I saw them like talking about why it failed on one of the business channels. It's like, well, we expected people to be waiting online and because the pandemic really. No, your idea was dumb. People don't want to watch some freaking like, you know. Well, you can't focus. I mean, if you're yeah. watching a dramatic show, right? Like, you want to be able to listen. Yeah. Exactly. And also, on the subways, you don't have service under. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like watching stuff on my phone in general, though. I never yeah. really did. Maybe a quick clip, but I'll never really watch Yeah, that. if anything, it's going to be a podcast, yeah, a podcast that you can listen to. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I totally agree. Anyway. Um, all right. Ta- <laughs> Thoughts on talking in music videos? I was like recently watching, I feel like this was a phase definitely in like the early 2000s okay, yeah. and ni- even 90s maybe. And then recently like Taylor Swift, like a lot of her. I don't like it. It takes you out of it. I remember. I, like, I agree. And that whole like Camila, Cab- Cab- oh, what's yeah. her name? Uh, Camila. I know you're talking Cabilla. about her. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah. She's, she's a fixture on my walks when I when I move from podcast to music. Yeah. It's going to be her. Yeah. Well, she's one of them. I'm gonna say, I, I, have to I mean, she has an amazing voice. Yeah. But that one video, like Havana. Havana. That's yeah, I love song. that song. Yeah, me too. But there's like a whole soap like opera at the beginning. Like Isn't that like R. Kelly? Some yes, yeah. it was like always that. It, yeah, anyway. I don't like it. There was, remember that song? Uh, it was like graduation. No, it was like wear sunscreen. It was like <laughs> wear sunscreen. And then it was like a song. And then be like, you'll, in 2020, you'll die of sun, whatever. Wear sun. You don't remember that? It was so. I don't even have to pull it up. <laughs> okay, Wait, we'll how old one. are you? Me? Yeah, you know. Oh, okay. <laughs> so 23. I'm, yeah, I'm. I think maybe it was in high school. It was like it was a graduation s- um, speech, and then they turned into a song. And it was like, if I could give you one piece of advice, it's like wear sunscreen. And it was it, it was like a talking song. It was interesting. Yeah, yeah, no thanks. I really hate it. It really bothers me so much. I just wanted to see if anybody else felt that. Um, all right, now we are up to the quest advice. I don't even think I told you about this. So we answer. Oh, maybe I did. So we answer. Uh, viewers and listeners okay. questions so we give some advice um number one okay. and i feel like you'll be able to help with this okay. i need advice for dating or meeting people during the pandemic it's about to be cuffing season and possibly quarantine round two morgan h what is cuffing cuffing season like when it gets cold and then you need like somebody to snuggle with oh Okay. Like basically, it's sort of this idea that everybody sort of couples up around oh, the winter cuffing. months. It sounds like some like like a porno section, like cuffing. I, just, I don't. Know, <laughs> I, mean, I never. Maybe it is. Look, cu- In Japan, it, people pay, right? Isn't yeah, Japan I know. Like, you wait, pay so, for cuddlers? So it's, oh, cuddling or cuffing? Cuffing season. Is that a combination of like cuddling and something else? I, actually, maybe. Yeah. But it, I think the idea is that you you will just kind of like couple up. Oh. Because because it's gonna be cold. Okay. Couple and cuddle and cuff. Okay, I don't know. Cuff. Sort of, Have someone yeah, at your yeah. cuff, maybe. Okay. Let's, well, let's see. I need advice doing it. Or meeting people during the pandemic, it's about to be cuffing. Okay, um, my advice would be. Oh, this is tough. How have you have you been dating? Yeah. I mean, I guess you don't have no, to say, no, yeah. but like, <laughs> like what, like right now? I mean, I'm obviously not on dating apps. Yeah, you guys, you guys getting married? Can I bring it into you? <laughs> he's a good guy. I like him. Yeah, he's a gem. Yeah. Just puts up with so many mood swings. Oh, so no, it's all right. literally a saint. <laughs> Uh, well, I can give her advice. Well, I, it's also important to know where she lives, but I'm going to assume New York. Yeah, New York. So, well, actually, I don't know. I'll say... Um, so, uh, assuming New York. I need advice for dating or meeting... I mean, I have friends that are, like, going full force. I think, like... Listen, I don't want to... Full force as in, like, they don't out with a lot of people, or... No, it's just, like, they're meeting people. My friend met a girl during the pandemic. He's dating her now. I think at this point, I don't know, like, well, you know, if you're young... I want people, I think people need to start living a little bit more. I, I don't want to go too political, but like we got, well, people are like literally dying from like suicides and stuff. I know yeah. I'm getting political. We need to get back a little bit, uh, whatever you, you know. Like wanna, go have fun. Yourself. Not, you know, it doesn't mean go like, you know, outside and cough on old people, but like if you want to meet a young person who's healthy, like do that. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like, be smart about it. Like, yeah. don't be an idiot, but or like go meet people. That you really, hey, here's your advice, Morgan. There's a guy you probably... The or one gal. That, or gal, sorry, yeah. There's someone that you probably um, let get away. Use this, yeah. Yeah, use this time to connect with someone that you probably missed out on and say, hey, I've been thinking about you and 
go to wherever they are and go get married and have some kids. Wait, that's actually a really good idea. Yeah. I think that's Because everyone in the city is a piece of shit. Put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> or whatever city you live in. Yeah. Listen, Morgan, I'm sure the guy or girl from high school that you liked but you forgot about when you went to college is thinking about you. So hit them up. Oh, so tender. Yeah. Um, okay, this one, <laughs> I feel like this has been happening a lot. This is how do I stop myself from buying a pet from Jake R. I do feel like during quarantine, I have one, seen everybody like getting a pet. Yeah. And two, having babies, even though it's yeah. like. <laughs> well, I, I, I'm going to answer that question is don't stop yourself. If, but if you're going to get a pet, don't like do like the, um, what is that? Game of Thrones, like buy like a wolf dog and then get rid of it after three weeks. Yeah. Get a pet and take care of it like it's a child. And love that pet and, and take him to the vet when he needs to. And if in the middle of the night he's, like, scratching on you, don't get mad. Just, you know, get him some biscuits. <laughs> so kind. Yeah. That was actually so sweet. But, I think also to adopt from a shelter. Yeah. Well, do, yeah, get, get from – don't go – I don't – I always confuse about the shelter thing, I'll be honest. Get from a shelter. But if there is someone that's breeding safely, do that too or no? You know, yeah, I guess it. so. I would say like... Don't get from that weird pet shop on 9th Avenue. Yeah, don't yeah, do yeah. that. <laughs> it's like, I feel bad, but we got to take care of the ones that are there. But no, let's not like... Yeah, I know. There are, there are um, yeah, reputable and like yeah. good people who are breeding. But I think too, there are also just so many pets that are... No, no. I, I think... But if you have a small apartment, don't get like a big dog. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, honestly, yeah. I do not understand that. The number of big dogs I see walking around the city yeah. is worrisome. To I me. think it's because it's like people saying like I got a big apartment, but like I don't yeah, know. I got a big apartment. It's like what are you doing? Like dogs need space. I love animals, cats too. Cat. Yeah. I used to hate cats, but I love cats now. Oh, I love cats. Yeah, you're great. I, I grew up with both, so yeah. I, I'm able to so make it educated. Um, so how do I st- don't stop yourself if you want one, but only get it if you could take care of it properly. Yeah. Take care of him or her, not it. It's not a. It's it, really. a yeah, it is a creature. Um, all right, great. Or hit up Morgan and go get married and have some pets. Honestly, yeah. <laughs> go adopt together. Yeah. Um, okay, and then last thing before, so I, like, in the last few episodes, I've liked to give some recommendations for either, like, something I'm reading or listening okay. or watching or whatever. My recommendation is, and I, I don't know, I feel like only in the last year have I started doing this more, which is, like, I'll keep my beer glasses in the freezer. Okay, yeah. And then when you have a beer at home, I mean, it transforms the experience. Okay. I, I, I cannot drink a beer without freezing my glass first. I think it's amazing. So <laughs> when, if I go to a bar and they pull a mug out of a freezer, it's, like, the best feeling ever. Yes. I know everything is clean. Yes. This place is done right. <laughs> if you get a place and the, the cup is, like, disgusting and the beer is out of a free... You don't know it because I worked in the beer industry. I bring it up again. That's why I always get bottles in places that I don't think are clean oh. because they come. You don't know what's going on downstairs with the thing. Get a bottle if you don't like the place. But if they have a mug that's frozen, you know they're doing it right. So I second that. Also, so you want my advice? Yeah, some some kind of recommendation I've done books. I've done all right. First of all, this show Kingdom on Netflix, right? Ooh. It's there's three kingdoms, I believe. There's one, no, there's two, and there's one the Last Kingdom. I never seen the Last Kingdom. I heard it was good, but I don't, it's not. Then there's a uh, Kingdom, which is a Korean show. It's with zombies. It might be good. It's not the one I'm talking about. Then there's Kingdom, which is a show that was on Audience Network, which is p- kind of like Quibi but better probably. But it it's starred. You know who Frank Grillo is? Sounds familiar. He's an older. He's not older, but he's like fifty. And then Nick Jonas is in it, and this other guy. I don't know his name, but he. I think his name is Jonathan Tucker, actually. But he's the acting in the show is really good. The writing is good, oh, nice. and that's a recommendation that is every time you ever tell someone about a show and they're like, "No, I don't want to watch you. I don't want to watch you," and then like you're like, "Yo, just watch the show." And then like I told Kevin about it, he's like, "No, I don't want to watch that." And then he sends me a text like, "Are we? Yo, this show is fucking amazing." <laughs> <laughs> so, the show is great. It's got like real stories, and you know those shows that connect with you. It's not yeah. really plot driven. It's more character driven. You're like, I okay. yeah. The acting is good. So that's my TV recommendation, my life hack recommendation. Ooh, nice. Yeah, go just walk. Just start walking. Yeah. Right? I swear. I mean, in, I the way I started walking was like I used to run, then I hurt my knee, and then just like if you're in a bad mood or something or something's not right, a walk will clear it up. I'm telling you, you'll just see stuff that, especially. If you're so do you listen to music or something, or you just or you don't? I listen to podcasts or or just mostly podcasts. Um, or just like audible books that like self help type stuff. Not self help, yeah. but like, well, I don't, I'm not against self help, but stuff like, there was a book I read. It was just like, it was before I was getting really nervous on stage. It's like, how to speak so your audience will listen. And it's like, t- oh. I used to have panic attacks on stage. Oh. 
And I still worry about that before I go on stage. But now, you ever have a panic attack? It's like... Yes, I have, yeah. It's funny. Not it's fun almost, at it's, all. It's, it's almost like at first I... I had a... Oh, last story. I had a panic attack. This is why I stopped doing comedy in Staten Island and then I... Well, in general, and then I stopped and came back. I was in... I was, thought I knew comedy. I was like, oh, I'm killing it, right? I was doing yeah. shows and it was easy, but only because they were bringer shows and they were bullshit jokes or whatever. So then I did a show in Staten Island. Like, so many people I knew were there. And I did the jokes, and no one was like, you know, when you first start, you're like, joke, joke, jokes, expect a laugh. Yeah. I didn't get the laugh where I expected it, and it just threw me off. Yeah. And then I started like having like a freaking panic attack. So I, I I hate repeating the story, but I'll say it. It's almost good to get it out. I like, I couldn't remember my jokes. And then this lady in the front was dying. She thought it was like some Andy Kaufman like presentation. I was like flipping out. And I got off stage. I was like, I can't do this. I'm done. I got and she starts cracking up, and then people like you hear your friends like, "Come on, Eric, let's go." It was like the worst. I go back on stage, and I'm just like, "Fuck this, I'm out." So I had a pat, and it took me a while to get over that, and I would always be afraid that would happen again. But then I read these books, and there's like techniques, and then you realize why you have when you realize why you have a panic attack. It's like you'll never have one again because once it starts coming, you're like, "Oh, this is bullshit." And like Sebastian, who I like, he had a panic attack on Fallon. Right? Really? Yeah. Oh, Sebastian Maniscalco. Yeah. So when I saw that, I was like, this is great. Cause wow, I actually would like to watch that. I was watching it live because, you know, I'm a fan. And I was like, I knew he was having a panic attack because I've had the same shit. Oh, my god. And then he – so I listened to his podcast. I saw it. They didn't talk about it. On the podcast the next day, he starts talking about the panic attack. Well, he didn't, he didn't really describe it as a panic attack, but it basically was – He's like, I started panicking. I thought my career was over. I was like, how am I going to recover from this? Yeah. Yeah. So then... Long story, wow, this makes me feel a lot better yeah. too, actually, that he... And then you... So he did that. And then he got more famous. And then you know how, like, when you get famous, you go on the couch? He, yeah. he went to talk to Fallon, and he told... And they recreated the story. I suggest you go watch that clip. Yeah. Because it was funny. He was like... So he's doing his jokes. And, he, and the reason why he had a panic attack, he says, is because he built it up so much in yeah. his head. And then he wasn't there. So he's doing a joke... And then all of a sudden he says a joke about his father. He's like, my father, my father. <laughs> and then like, he just, and then, so then they cut. It's a weird angle. And then he got back into it. And that's his experience where he can get back into it. I'd probably, me, I'd probably start like throwing up now. Yeah. But then he like, so then they made fun of it. And you're like, it's not a big deal. It they actually, made, yeah. yeah. No, that's actually like a really, yeah. it's a really good point. And also it always feels, it always feels like it's so much worse than it oh, is. Oh yeah, because. In your head, you start making up everything. Yeah. Right, like, if you're on Fallon and you're having a panic attack, you probably like, uh, let down my family, my kids. Right. And, yeah, and uh, instead, they, it, was, it wasn't his best performance, but he went from that to like, he was going come, up and coming. Obviously, he's on Fallon, but now he's just, you know. Crushing so, it. Like, like, for me, I used to go on stage and I was like, oh, don't have a panic attack, don't have a panic attack. And, and now, you're thinking like, about I've it. I've almost had panic attacks like at Zona. And then I just, like, all you do is, just, like, reset and just start talking about something. You yeah. Know? That's all you do. It's like, no, you, yeah. yeah, it's like. No, I've had that happen, too. And, like, I don't know if it, this happens for you, but one time it happened to me, actually, when I was doing a show in Florida. And and I, I didn't really have that. I had, like, some new material. But for the most part, like, nothing where it should have been that crazy, yeah. right? And it was, like, around other comedians I'd worked with before, same thing. But basically, like, what happened was that like a friend of mine was down visiting yeah it's always and she's like excited to see it i knew two other people that were coming who like you know one was like another girl i'd worked with before in a play and i was like oh my god i want her to think that i do well and then like um my boyfriend lon and i had we were sort of like still newly dating at the time he was coming and it was just like and like some other friends so basically yeah long story short was that i knew like so many people in the audience yeah. and like people who hadn't seen me perform before and i valued their opinion and so i was like suddenly like just oh my god and and i also like froze on stage like forgot what i was saying <laughs> and know, then so like basically like ended it early oh yeah and then i just like started like yeah, then I get off stage and I start like crying or whatever and then like to make it worse this girl uh, yeah, that so- i knew was like she comes she comes after and she'd like seen my set before and she goes oh my god char what happened oh god i, would and I was like oh my god <laughs> that's where you take that frozen beer glass you were saying <laughs> but, oh yeah that's the worst one oh, one last thing i'll say um you can't get never get off stage early that's what dice told sebastian in the book he did oh that. really yeah. he's like because if you're a, a featuring for a, a headliner 
and you're supposed to do 15 minutes, do 15 because the guy's expecting you to, you know, what he's doing. So that's one yeah. piece of advice. That's not my advice. His advice. Two. <laughs> so last thing, I guess, I don't know, we're going over here. Oh, the you're, fine, that, you're fine. The book I read that I listened to on walks is a while ago. So, so I don't know if this is true, but it might be. So if you're having a panic attack, right? your blood rushes to your legs because you want to run away, right? That's what he oh. said in the book. So it's fight or flight. So if you squeeze your, like, thigh muscles or... No, wait, what's the... Quads and your butt? Yeah. Your blood will go back to your brain. That's what he said. So even if it doesn't work... Even if work, it's mental. Yeah, it yeah. worked for me. You know how many times I'm on stage squeezing my ass and, like, let me know what's happening? <laughs> so that's what it is. So squeeze your ass. That's my last advice. If you're having a panic attack, squeeze your ass. You'll be fine. Wow, that was great advice. Let's yeah. end it there. Okay, cool. Eric, thank you so much for joining. Uh, and uh, we'll see you all next week. All right, Thanks bye. for tuning in. Thank you.